Well, <laughs> looks like we meet again. And I also found out who brought me the you-know-what of the you-know-who. And let's just say that they won't be saying anything else for a long time. However, it did come with a price. The next job I did was quite a shock, and... Well, well, you'll, you'll just see what else happened. Okay. So I finished another job that was quite exhausting, but I got paid well for it. And then I received another job notification for my tactical glasses. Now, these glasses were, of course, made by the one and only Eagle Eye. <laughs> he made these sunglasses for me to see through, but when you're facing me, you can't see what I see through them. And, well, plus I'm on my own again, since my team and I did the last job together. We had fun with that, but, but now we went our separate ways. Anyways, I opened it up using my black gloves, which Eagle Eye connected them through, and I read it said that this job wanted me to break into a known place called Club 33, which we all know is in Disneyland. I double-checked to see if they meant in Disneyland or Disney World, but it was clear that it was in Disneyland. So I contacted the employer as I introduced myself as Ghost. Yeah, you heard the name correctly. I'm no longer Fives, because... Well, because I found out about the person who knew about the job that we all did on the island, and they knew my real identity. I also found out that they have spilled my real name to other people that they knew. Luckily, they didn't know about the names of my team, so I guess that's a lucky break for them. Sadly, I had to fake my own death with that person to the grave to protect the others from being hunted down. I threw my dog tags in the fire with them, but... Hey, I'm no Simon Riley, so Fives, or in this case my real name, no longer exists. You following me? From now on, there is only Ghost. I told Eagle Eye, and he understood, in a way, on why I did what I had to do. And he'd still help me on what other missions that I may have. Anyways. I talked to the employer about the job that they selected me for, and they said that they have or, well, had a resource who was in Club 33 and found secrets that no one had seen before. However, he was compromised and didn't really get the chance to grab the evidence. And sadly, they haven't... Well, they haven't heard from him since. But one thing is for sure is that they found out that he told his story about what he saw but that they feared that they got to him because of what he knew and that he hasn't updated since then. In fact, I did hear his story of breaking into Club 33 a while back, and I accepted the job offer on those grounds. They sent me a picture of who they called Joe, or the guy who went missing. I told them I'd send them whatever evidence I could find in there and possibly find Joe. If by any chance he is being held somewhere in Club 33, I highly doubt it, but, you know, who knows? Disney is known for keeping a lot of dark secrets. The next day came about, and as I drove down on my motorcycle to Disneyland and parked it in the parking lot, I went along with the crowd who were anxious to get in the amusement park. I made it past security, and I explored the park. I remembered going there since I was a kid, seeing a lot of people, being happy, taking photos and vlogging, even though it really didn't exist at that time. Uh, personally, I wish it stayed that way. Anyways, I, I then found Club 33, and, well, sadly, I won't tell you how I entered, because it is classified, <laughs> and I don't want any of you pulling the same stunt that I did, to avoid you from being banned from Disneyland. Let's just say that the inside was interesting. I saw a lot of art, small palm trees, a small boat replica of Steamboat Willie, a painted picture of Walt Disney, big stairs heading into, I suppose, was the dining area. But then I heard footsteps coming my way. I had to rush myself in a janitor's closet. 
I had my gear in my backpack, so I changed into it quickly. And of course it was the same gear I used from Discovery Island, but with a new ghost balaclava. I put on my balaclava on and got out of the closet and made my way to an elevator. Which I remembered in the story that Joe had mentioned that he went through here. I was still cautious, though. I finally made it to the elevator. I then went inside, and there were the elevator keys to my left. If I remembered correctly, Joe pushed the number three twice. I did that, and then I heard, Welcome back, Walt, through the speakers. Holy shit, it actually works, I said to myself. As the elevator took me down, I then felt that we were going deeper underground. The elevator came to a stop. I opened the gate, and I went into what looked like a small basement. It had a ton of papers piled on one side and, and boxes stacked up on the other. I started to record with my small camera that Eagle Eye had given me from a POV angle attached to my vest. I then got a whiff of a bad odor. Shit, that... Oh, that reeks. I said, trying to ignore the smell for a bit. I then looked around and went through some of the piles of paper, and some of the boxes. Nothing special, just ground area rules. A map to where the tunnels connected so that the mascots could get through to the park. It was interesting. Also, I found ideas from movies that already had been created. I then went further into a corner, and then I saw a small desk which appeared to be sparkling clean, with no trace of a single dust speck. I saw sticky notes on the desk, and, and by the look of it, it had words that involved the Freemasons. <laughs> now we're talking, I whispered again. And to my surprise, I saw a box with a gray tape with writing that was labeled Suicide Mouse. I looked at it shocked. Fuck, it, it does exist, I said, whispering as I opened the box and showing the tape on my camera. I then saw a big black cube in the corner. I looked at it closely and realized that it was a freezer. I thought to myself, is what I think inside there. I opened up the freezer, my eyes widening. My heart felt like it had just stopped forever. It was true. It, it was right there in front of me, true as day. It was the frozen head of Walt Disney inside of a frozen container. Lord have mercy, I said while I held the container turning it as I kept the film rolling. I then put it back. Jesus, I said. But then the odor became stronger and it smelled horrible. Ugh. No mames. What is that smell? I asked. But as I was getting my shit together, I then heard the elevator coming down to this level. Shit, gotta hide, I said in my mind. I then hid behind the cornered boxes, and then the smell got even stronger. I saw two huge guys coming out of the elevator and looked around to see if anything was missing. Luckily, they didn't see me as they went back into the elevator, and as they did that, it then smelled that horrible smell again. I then followed the smell of where it led to, and to my horror, I... Well, I thought I felt my spirit leave my body. I found Joe. He was slit from his throat and had many cuts on his stomach. His corpse was left down there, and I guess they waited to get rid of him later. Damn, Joe, I, I can't believe that these bastards did this to you. I said. I then took out my tiny cross that I carry for whenever I go on these missions. I know God is always protecting me. Also, since I made that promise to the big man, I go to church every Sunday now, since I survived the big mission. 
I place it on Joe's chest. Rest easy, brother, I said. 